Hi everyone, welcome back. And here to see the stories, our signature segment of the Three Hour News Show. And today, September the 16th, is observed as the International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer, a day dedicated to highlighting the importance of protecting our planet's ozone layers. Ever since September the 16th, 1994, we have celebrated International Ozone Day after the United Nations designated this day to kickstart global awareness about protecting the ozone layer. Featuring the theme Montreal Protocol Advancing Climate Action, this year highlights the Montreal Protocol's vital role in safeguarding the ozone layer while also contributing to broader climate efforts. The day aims to remind the global community of the urgency to protect the Earth sunscreen as one of the collective efforts to ensure a safer and healthier future for all mankind. And to know more about World Ozone Day and how young generations can take part in combating climate change, we are now joined with climate reality leader Ari Adipratomo in the studio. Hello, Ari. How are you Hello. doing? Hello. Good Pleasure to be evening. here. Pleasure Good evening. Good evening. So thank you for being here at our sure. studio. So we all know, based mm -hmm. on the previous information, that September the 16th is observed as International Day for the preservation of the ozone layer. Could you tell us what is the current state of our ozone layer right now since 1994? Mm -hmm. What kind of the progress? And um, how does climate change affect our ozone layer? Okay, sure. Thank you, first of all. So, if we remind again about the importance of the ozone layer itself, it becomes, as you mentioned before, the natural sunscreen of our Earth. Mm -hmm. It repels the UVB and many other dangerous rays that directly hits the Earth. Mm -hmm. And currently, uh, due to the Montreal Protocol and other international agreements, actually the ozone layer has shown the uh, recovery progress. Mm -hmm. Wow. But this is uh, something that we have to notice, that the process of recovery is not even across the Earth. So in some area it's better, while the other are not that great actually. Mm. This is due to the climate change as well, because the greenhouse gases that release and also becoming the uh, major driver of the climate change is also basically depleting the ozone mm. layers. Ah, right. But so. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so basically, protecting the layers of ozone is also protecting our climate. Oh. Because so many greenhouse gases is also contributing not only to the climate change, but also to the depletion of the ozone layer. Mm. So in order to protect our ozone, at the same time, it means protecting and mitigating the effort of the climate change in, the, our, in our world. Right. So mm -hmm. we have to admit that some nations are, you know, in the work of um, <clears throat> minimizing yeah. their impact mm -hmm. towards um, climate change, yeah. right? For example, the EU mm -hmm. and maybe um, several other Asian countries. But some countries, including Indonesia, find it really hard to, you know, create net zero um, emission or try to minimize their impact towards environment. Um, what you said earlier that the ozone layer is not even yeah. in terms of its um, improvement. Does it have something to do with the country that is nowadays more industrialized? For example, in China or in Indonesia, in which its ozone layer, for example, is thinner than other parts of the world, for example, the EU. Does that make sense? Or is it what is really happening right now? Well, because we are living on the same roof and then we are living on the, you know, big giant sphere mm. called Earth, all contributions matters. Mm. It has to be collective actions mm -hmm. between one country to another. So we cannot differentiate just the country that has major uh, power in terms of economy, mm. basically to reduce the greenhouse gases and also ozone depleting uh, substances or ODS. But it has to be collective efforts. Developing countries also collaborate with the developed countries to create a common and joint efforts mm -hmm. to reduce not only greenhouse gases, but at the same time the ODS, we call it, the ozone depleting uh, substances. Mm. So it is again a collective effort. Mm. Everyone is involved, everyone is responsible. Everyone mm. is responsible. Yes. yes. So you're focusing on what the youth can actually do to sure. help this ozone layer not depleting, right? Mm -hmm. When we talk about developing countries, developed nations, yeah. isn't it fair to say that they have done their part developing 
in the old days. <laughs> now it is time for, let's say, Indonesia and other developing countries to develop the country industrial and also um, trying to, you know, reach that target that the developed countries have actually reached. So, do you have any idea how to basically collaborate with these nations, maybe the youth, let's say, mm -hmm. in order to have a balance in a way, because we are living under the same roof as you mentioned, yes. but we cannot really ban all those you know plans to develop like nations like indonesia mm -hmm. and uh, for the sake of let's you know the roof needs to be saved you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah, yeah. we're not you know we're not going to go there if we keep thinking about trying to reduce our pace yes so this has been an ongoing debate between mm -hmm. the developing countries and also the developed countries um, when i was at the un table uh supporting the indonesian delegation for instance Ooh, UN table. Uh, basically, there was some uh, major proposition from the developing countries saying that, hey, you have been developed, exactly. the other countries. Mm -hmm. You have been enjoying mm -hmm. the benefits of using fossil, fo uh, fossil uh, fuel for the, so many years. The sins were committed in the past, yes. right, for yes. developed yes, nations. True. Yeah, and then <laughs> we just try to develop our countries and we don't have enough money to basically afford those technologies yeah, and transform into and the transformed more into renewables. a greener and yeah. renewable but again this is uh, the proposition that has to be forgotten mm. each of the country has to take their own actions mm. their own efforts according to their own capacity mm. what we call it the common but differentiated responsibilities mm -hmm. like for instance at your neighborhood may uh, maybe not everyone has the same capacity in terms of the uh, financial support mm -hmm. for their family. So you cannot say that, oh, we're gonna have uh, mandatory for all of us to you know, yeah. basically like, uh, give such and such money yeah. for our yeah. development. Mm -hmm. It has to be according to the strength of each country. Right. right. So again, it is important for all of us to contribute, but again, we have to also take a look carefully at the capability that we are having. True. I mean, talking about capability, we have quite an aggressive target for yeah. our NDC and all yes. that. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, do you think we need to like evaluate and maybe next year we think, oh, this is too high to reach like what, 41% with the, or maybe more than that, right? With the help of uh, other countries to have that NDC. Mm -hmm. Is it okay to actually reduce our target? Well, <laughs> <laughs> is it a tough Ale question, Japan, actually? Ale is being pragmatic it. here. No, no, no. I mean, Japan did it because they knew that it's probably not easy to reach. Yeah. But again, uh, what, what is the most important here is to also create a system of policy making where it's inclusive. Mm. Involve everyone's. Mm. So not just policy makers, but also those are uh, coming from the remote areas. Those who are facing directly the environmental crisis. Mm. Mm. right in front of their houses yeah true because without listening to everyone it is very difficult to basically measure the targets mm. right and according to the un uh, we have to always review our targets every now and then mm. so we know that whether it's too high whether it's too low or we have to be more ambitious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, i do personally believe that Indonesia should push for the stronger uh, right. climate okay uh, basically uh, commitment mm -hmm. but again it has to involve everyone mm -hmm. you cannot say that oh we want to reduce such and such um, Target. green targets uh, mm -hmm. without involving those who are uh, staying at the rural areas because they are the one that will be uh, directly, directly like, impacted by the climate change mm -hmm. yeah. those who are living in the rural area those who are the civil society those who are becoming the indigenous people mm -hmm. they are the one who are affected the most including women elders and also the children right right so um enough for the tough questions let's now go <laughs> I know, straight I'm like to bombarding him with questions let's now go straight that. to um okay. 101 right so sure, this is sure. one um 101 about um greenhouse gas emission and of yeah. course about how to prevent um ozone depletion yeah one way to address um, ozone layer depletion and climate change is to reduce greenhouse um, emissions, yeah, right? Sure. So how can we as the young generation can contribute to this? I understand that maybe by shifting towards more renewable, sustainable um, electric vehicles, for example, or electric mode mm -hmm. um, vehicles, that can be an option, but what else can we do? Well, actually, it goes back to uh, everyone's um, own personal choices. Mm. Yeah, I may say how they live their uh, life, how they choose wisely, how 
basically how they're conducting their activities. For instance, transportations. We have all the options uh, to go from point A to point B, whether you're taking your private vehicles or you're taking the public transport. But again, for instance, me going from Bogor here using the um, train probably only costs about a few hundred uh, grams of carbon uh, greenhouse gases mm. because I'm taking public transport. Mm. I'm taking train and then I'm walking here from Gunangdia stations. Wow. wow. But if we, you are talking about private car, mm. it probably costs you several kilograms of uh, CO2 equivalent. So co kilograms compared to grams you're yes. talking? Yes. Because wow. if you're taking public transport, you are dividing equally, equally between the numbers. Equally with other passengers. Yes, with <laughs> yeah. other passengers. Yeah. So you probably have only ha several hundreds of grams. Mm. But when you're taking your private vehicles, when you're taking your private cars, it will significantly increase. I'm wondering where's the incentive, right, to yeah. use public yeah. transport? Because we know that the government is planning to scrap the subsidy mm. of KRL. Exactly. And it's getting harder for us to, you know, to continue or to maintain our use of public transport. But again, mm -hmm. if our goal is to help the earth or help Indonesia to sustain and to achieve uh, net zero emission by 2060 mm -hmm. nationally, then we will take the risk. Yeah, so yeah. transportation is one of the ways industry areas and all that needs to be also thought about. Yeah. But uh, talking about um, the greenhouse gas, yes. uh, you, you, you're saying that excessive UA exposure from the depletion of ozone layer mm -hmm. raises the risk, it can risk the risk, uh, raise the risk of uh, health problems yeah. and also climate change worsens natural disasters and throws ex ecosystems out of balance. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us the impacts, especially on humans, when we really don't put attention on, you know, try to save our layers of ozone? Well, ozone layer on the troposphere actually uh, basically repel the UVB. But when it comes to the ground level, it creates impact to your health from the uh, respiratory problem and also many other problems that are basically affecting you because ozone is actually dangerous for us if it is on the ground level. Right. It is actually um, decreasing the ability of us to, you know, remove the uh, free oxygen, antioxidant for our body. Mm. And so many other um, studies have, have shown that ozone layer at the ground level is dangerous for humans. Mm. It is created from the um, secretions of the fossil fuel right. excess and many others, activity of humans. But the most important thing is that we are realizing how we are affecting on uh, our Earth on a daily basis. Like for instance, I mentioned before, transportations, mm. and even the way you are consuming your products every day. Mm, mm, mm. It is actually creating greenhouse gases. Mm. And you have to remember that everything that we are doing here on our Earth is actually creating greenhouse gases. Sure. We call it a uh, footprint. Mm. Mm. Carbon footprint. Carbon footprint. We have to understand like, oh, okay, Today, I made sin to our earth how many grams, how many kilograms. So, if you are aware of it, wow. you'll become wiser. Okay. Yeah. So, so Alia, any... stop using your private jet, okay? <laughs> I don't even own one. <laughs> I mean, uh, if we go together, maybe that can be distributed evenly. Among yeah. Us. But, true, true. but what is the easy formula, you know, when you are a starter and you realize that I want to take part in this action. Sure. Mm -hmm. So what, what kind of formula do you think is easy to be applied that say to always evaluate our sins every single day and, you know, meditate around it? Yeah, well, so many organizations has come up with what we call with the carbon calculator. Mm. So, uh, for instance, the World Resources Institute and many others, they're coming up with the uh, daily usage of the carbon yeah. footprint calculator. Mm -hmm. So you can basically calculate how much sin you are making to our Earth every day. Mm, right. Like the way you are transporting, how much electricity you are using today, okay. and many others. So by realizing that every day, and you are making wiser choice every day, mm -hmm. like for instance, you're not buying, you are consuming less of the imported product. Mm. Right. Mm. So you will sin less to our Earth. Because transporting one product from, from one far away, far away mm. like for instance, oh, probably one person will be like very happy and very that he or she is eating imported banana, for instance. Okay, this is made in Africa. <laughs> so, so gardening is actually helpful. Gardening. Right? Yes, gardening. Oh. gardening. Mm. And also it's strengthening our food security. Yes, so we've been talking about transportation uh -huh. and contributing to the uh, greenhouse gas emission, yes, right? Sure. 
and you mentioned about gardening as well. Mm -hmm. So apart from uh, changing our transportation habit yeah. and maybe perhaps start to grow your own banana, grow your lettuce, mm -hmm. broccoli, etc. What can, what else can we do at our home, at our nearest environment? The nearest environment, because we are living in Jakarta, mm -hmm. we have to also um, understand that we are creating excessive heat oh. throughout our, our environment. So keeping your environment green okay. in any way, urban gardening, does oh. also help to reduce the temperature right. in the urban. What about reducing the use of electricity, for example? Definitely, and also introducing the usage of the renewable energy mm. on your daily life. Because so many people are now uh, start to plan their own solar panel mm. at their homes mm -hmm. because it's not, not only reducing the amount of the electricity they are using but they're also introducing the usage of the renewable energy yeah. and it is one of the issues as well. exactly and it's one of the issues that we have to push further mm. because in many countries people are having their own options mm. of choosing their energy whether it's coming from the fossil fuel or is it coming from the renewable energy? Mm -hmm. And this is one of the aspects that we have to push further towards the policymakers, mm -hmm. making them make uh, renewable energy more available towards publics right. and make it uh, a choice for us. Mm -hmm. I think the government is not 100% yet in supporting renewable energy at a household level, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the uh, regulations yeah. and the, let's say, the company behind the electricity in Indonesia is not yet, um, you know, fully supportive towards us having a choice. Yeah. I think this is the right time because mm. if we want to reduce the greenhouse, greenhouse gas emission mm -hmm. and we want to achieve net zero emission in industry by 2050 and nationally by 2060, then we have to change our paradigm. Anyway, yeah, this is the role everyone. of youth in combating climate change. If we see in the back change, uh, see. on the screen, um, we see. So could yes, you elaborate sorry. the role of youth in combating climate change? We see there are three, at least three points here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first one, understanding and reducing carbon footprints. As I mentioned before, yeah. we have to understand that how much we are making, well, how much we are sending to our earth. On a daily basis. On a daily basis. Yeah. So making a wise choices like eco-friendly transportation mm. or probably using less energy or using um, local products mm. is one of the wise options. Yeah. Okay. Secondly, supporting renewable energy. Because currently most of our energy in Indonesia is driven from the fossil fuel. We have to understand that, hey, this the energy that we are using mm -hmm. is something that is not very clean, mm -hmm. then we have to push further. And we are abundant of that, right? Yes, we are abundant of that from the hydropower, solar power, and many other forms of energy. Yeah. But again, it has to come up from the consumer side. Mm. And so if the, the demand needs the to be demand there. In the, Exactly. If there is no yeah. demand, how we can basically push further for the changes? Yeah. We have to create the demand here. Mm -hmm. And then again, minimizing, minimizing waste because waste also create greenhouse gases. Right. on a massive amount right yeah. right and not only we are creating greenhouse gases but at the same time we are losing the benefit of economy from the waste mm. because if you could reduce the waste amount you can basically create economic opportunities yeah from the uh reducing the food waste food loss and many others you can actually help our economy yeah because what at the end of the day what people want is actually an affordable energy yes affordable whether energy. it's yeah hopefully we can have an affordable renewable energy or more green hopefully energy, fingers right? crossed fingers crossed yeah. yeah okay so what how do you see the young generations now in, in um, understanding the importance of addressing climate crisis and try to take roles in it okay um, based on my interactions with the youth uh, nowadays they feel the sense of urgency, basically, mm. because they are the one that will inherit the worst True. effect of the climate change. Yeah. True. They are demanding for a revolutionary ways of changing our policy. Mm. While at the same time, they are thinking that older generation might take it a bit too slow mm. because uh, probably the policymakers are tend to be creating a gradual changes and you know, uh, slow changes on the policy but youth are driving for a more revolutionary way of changing their policy. Mm -hmm. And this is the area where actually we require youth to be more involved. Yeah. We require youth to be sitting on the, uh, together with the policymakers yeah. and for the policymakers to listen to the youth, but not only youth, but also women, indigenous people, yeah. and also the elder generations, because those are the persons who are affected the most by the climate change and also 
ozone layer depletions. Yeah. Mm. Well, it reminds me of the uh, a video of a lady that feeds monkeys in Bali, and nowadays yeah. you see that forest in Bali mm. uh, is vanishing mm. because of over tourism. Yeah, yeah. and over like tourism. We, exactly, and we have to control our greed, right, for economy greed to yeah. save the environment. And that video, you know, keeps uh, playing in my head, and it reminds me of that by preserving. Um, the forest, then we, can, we are contributing to the uh, sustainability of our planet. Now, this is my last question to you before we sure. take a break. Mm. So, what are the main challenges uh, for the youth to contribute more? Is it the uh, policy wall or wall created by the policymakers, or is there any other challenge? Okay, there are several hindrances basically that face by the youth on a daily basis. The first one is the lack of seat at the decision making. Uh, areas mm. where it is difficult for you to basically penetrate towards that area and to voice out uh, their ideas, to voice out their uh, views on this one and then to all on the financial constraint. Because financial constraint has hindered the progress from the youth projects. Because sometimes youth are having a very tremendous ideas. And creative brilliant, ideas, yeah. Yes, and creative as well. But mm. they don't have financial capabilities to basically yeah. uh, push it further, yeah. to push the envelope further. And also there's a distant problem, I may say. Because many people in Indonesia don't see the problem of climate change and also environment as the main problems. Mm. Probably other issues like uh, job security, yeah. daily livelihood is more important. And for those people, therefore, climate change is put on the lowest level yeah. of the attention. Priorities, yeah. Priorities. And the last one, probably, generational gap mm. between mm. the policymakers Try and them. the one on the youth. Because youth probably sees the problem of environment on their areas every day. Mm. It may not be seen by those who are sitting on the power. Right, right. right. Yeah. Try so to sink what, them as Exactly. That's yes, why. We need more youth to participate and to sit at the policy-making level. Yeah. Sure. Right, so there's no generation gap. As soon as now, right? As soon as, as, soon as now. <laughs> All right, so we'll continue our talk with Ari after the break. Don't go anywhere.